So, the uh, the state is definitely not doing anything wrong ever. Um, anyone who has been subscribed to this channel should unsubscribe because I've been wrong this whole time. Um, and and you know you can just take it from the people who are mad about my uh, email newsletters or anything else that I've said. Um, now, uh, the, the thing that I'm totally wrong about, you know, today is, um, I'm totally wrong about my sneaking suspicion that the West has provoked another situation. And I'm not going to say what that is. I'm just going to leave it up to your imagination and then state some things. Um, as those of you who've been following news know, um, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline was blown up, and this was after, you know, after Putin had already said that he would just turn it off in a way that it could be turned back on. So he said he would turn it off, Right. And then suddenly it's blown up. Now, there's multiple potential levels here, right? And I'm not going to say which one yet. I'm just going to, you know, say a few things before that. Um, first, I, I think I'll start with a tweet that I wrote, which is that um, a Venn diagram of people who think Russia would blow up its own pipeline and permanently destroy it when they could just shut it off and on again so that they can start a war and somehow don't believe the American government would blow up a few buildings to start a war is a circle. Now, why did I say that? Well, maybe, just putting it out there, uh, if you believe Russia would fundamentally sabotage a key player in its own economy uh, in order to uh, start a war or justify more military spending or imperial expansion, y you could appreciate how similar that could be to another nation who had something much worse happen. Just saying, you know, it might boggle the noggle a little, but the U.S. government is capable of evil. It's not just Russia. You can't just point at Russia and always say that Russia is the only and ever bad guy. And anything bad that happens is Russia's fault. Even though there's nothing concretely linking Putin to this, they already say it's him. Sort of like, you know the U.S. government already said um, that Bin Laden was guilty, like, immediately. Fucking immediately. It was Bin Laden, it was Al-Qaeda, it was them, them, them. And why did they say that? Well, because some alleged Bin Laden acolytes uh, had their passports aboard the fucking plane. Allegedly. And these passports, allegedly, completely survived a fire that explosively uh, melted a, a steel-framed building off, right? For anyone who still believes that and hasn't listened to the janitor talk about what he heard in the sub-basement, you might want to start now, but, you know, it's something to consider that maybe... Uh, a building that isn't hit by a plane doesn't go down because it's hit by a little bit of debris. That maybe the part of the Pentagon that got hit might have been, like, hiding some, you know, things. Oh, shit, man, that, that almost looked like I was winking and telling you to look further into that. Man, shit, I got some in my eye. Um, so... This would obviously, you know, be the exception to the rule because America would never do that. But Russia, them evil Ruskies, they definitely would. Because we can 
xenophobically and jingoistically blame them for literally anything. Even before the invasion of Ukraine, people were blaming them for the way the U.S. elections went. And part of their thing, it was so fucking hilarious, was that uh, Russia had sponsored some anti-police brutality websites, like some Black Lives Matter shit. Wow! So they, they sponsored some anti-racist sentiment, and you think that helped Trump? What do you think that says about you? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's just a little bit fucky, ain't it? So, um, Russia would definitely do that. Um, and they're the only ones who could have done it. We've established that, right? Just so that Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, wherever this is posted, realizes we definitely believe that um, that Russia is the only one who could have done this. That it was definitely Russia. I'm completely exceeding, you know, give me a boot to lick and I will do it, right? I, I, I just... I gotta make sure I'm sticking to the narrative. Wouldn't want to be accused of wrong thing. That'd be, that wouldn't be double plus good now, would it? Gotta chug that parapin. Um, you know, so I figured uh, I would I would start with that before I just jumped right into a very interesting article by somebody who works at the Council for Fucking Foreign Relations which is an incredibly evil organization responsible for a significant amount of globalist evil. Here's what they have to say. In Washington, everyone wins if Ukraine wins. How back in Kiev can bridge the partisan divide and make U.S. foreign policy great again? You just gotta lean back and let it soak in. You gotta enjoy it every once in a while. Just the sheer amount of in your faceness of the just massive corporate cock shoving down your throat. You gotta enjoy it sometime. You know? How I learned to stop worrying and love pro war propaganda. And and you'll notice it's just that because <laughs> A man carries his son as they walk past a graffiti on a wall depicting a Ukrainian soldier firing a U.S.-made Javelin portable anti-tank missile system in Kiev on July 29th. wonder if that's, you know, a Ukrainian soldier uh, unedited, or if you had any uh, patches like the Azov Battalion's son in Radin Vosango, or any totem cop for anything like that, you know. Sort of like a huge amount of the other Ukrainian soldiers. Anyway, because, um, you know, those are the good Nazis now. We can we can support those Nazis. We went from, you know, you there's no reconciliation or repairing. There's no reasoning with them. You should just punch them on sight or worse. We went from that to, uh, yeah, d those Nazis are bay though. Got them heart eye emojis. Um, so this article goes on to say uh, a few things. And uh, the article is from the Council on Foreign Relations, so you know it's a brand you can trust. The 21st century has been one long catastrophe for U.S. foreign policy. A series of failed military interventions and other mishaps has squandered the country's power and reputation, even as old rivals such as Russia revive their fortunes and new rivals such as China have continued to rise. They're not rivals. They were trading partners. That was one of the reasons sanctions hurt everybody and, and were tantamount to an act of war. And it's also the reason that a significant amount of food came from Russia and a significant amount of tech came from China. You hack. Holy shit, dude. Rivals. 
um, such as Russia, revived their fortunes, and new rivals such as China have continued to rise. In the blink of an eye, the, mo the notion of a post-American world has gone from specter to cliché. Meaning, it went from, you know, ooh, this could happen, to, yeah, it's happened. Contempt for the U.S. and the West more generally clearly contributed to the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and opponents of even indirect U.S. involvement in the conflict portray it as yet another example of misguided military adventures. I oh, fucking wonder why, man. Hmm. You know, it could be that the people were arming, the U.S. anyway, not me, could be that the people were arming, um... Uh, are are heavily infested with Nazis and massive in, uh, uh, imperialist statists. It could be that the whole system uh, is designed to prop up the Western Empire and eventually it's going to end up with Ukraine's first ever smart country. Um, <laughs> right? With, with, with AI courts, cashless purchases, and all that shit. It could be that it's a very corrupt country and it's okay to point out the corruption of a country and the corruption of another country helping that country to the tune of 60 billion plus dollars. Enough money that they just don't want to account for it anymore. Um, it could be that that is why people think that this is misguided military adventurism because it's just another example of the U.S. supporting Nazis or other far-right figures like the Contras or the Mujahideen in their attempts to fight Russia. It's always been their excuse. But uh, these people say, in fact, the opposite is true. This time, for a change, somebody else is playing the reckless foreign invader while the U.S. is sensibly counterpunching and enabling the victim to resist. Washington is picking its allies smartly and working with them closely. Instead of repeating recent U.S. strategic mistakes, the Biden administration is avoiding them, pursuing a fundamentally different approach. And it's working. Yeah, give them enough money and supplies that they can sell uh, the supplies for more money. And so that they can maintain regional supremacy, even though... Um, Donetsk and Luhansk weren't crazy about that. Uh, and even though uh, it cut off access to places like Crimea. Look, fuck Russia. Fuck Russia. Fuck the Wagner Group. Fuck Putin's fascist little castle. You know? Fuck the fact that they regularly kill their political opponents and that they would probably kill me for what I'm saying now uh, if I lived there. Fuck everything about their government. But yo, this is such a 2D take, man. Holy shit. They're not even asking how it's it's working. Uh, they're just saying that it's working. Yeah, war profiteering. War profiteering is making a lot of business over there, and so they're getting more arms and support as a fucking consequence. It doesn't make it like, you know, some awesome choice just because it's working. It can work fine and still be a bad plan for the common person. The S&P is down. House prices are up. The stock market's wiping $9.3 trillion off in one day. Uh, crypto's crashed. Everything's crashing. Everything's dying. Homelessness is high. Suicide is high. Drug and alcohol addiction are high. Let's throw $60 billion plus at Ukraine instead of any of our own problems. The military loves that, and the military industrialists love that. And so, of course, they're going to throw as much money at it as possible so that they have artificial economic growth during a downturn. And, like, they, they do that, by the way. It's just U.S. government pumps money into U.S. manufacturers those manufacturers give people weapons and war materials, and um, the U.S. government gets to act like their economy is doing better because temporarily it looks like it is while all this money is going to build bombs and the kind of thing that's in this fucking picture right here. War is a racket, Smedley Butler was right. 
after holding on to Kiev in the spring and fighting a grinding war of attrition over the summer, Ukrainian forces have surged forward this fall, sending Russian forces reeling and retaking large chunks of territory lost earlier in the conflict. Allegedly. I know some soldiers who disagree with that. Um, active duty. And uh, I'll tell you, they're not too happy with narratives like this because it's making it seem like we're going to mobilize at some point too. Not great. Uh, not a great way to, to spend your 2022 is to know that the war machine didn't fucking draw down an ounce after Afghanistan and they're looking for a new place to put boots and test military equipment like Google was talking about, like I was mentioning in that video the other day. You know, almost like the CIA is behind a lot of this and is exactly like what I said in my CIA video the other day. You can just keep watching my videos and subscribe uh, if you want more hard-hitting shit like this. But um, basically, the fucking... The article goes, uh, Moscow has responded by rushing forward sham referendums to whitewash its claims to the occupied Donbass region and parts of southern Ukraine while frantically mobilizing hundreds of thousands of additional troops, spurring protests across the country. The war has many stages yet to run, and yet not all of them will be as heartening as recent weeks. Still, September's developments show that Kiev is on the right track and Washington is backing the strong horse. I was in Kiev as the counteroffensive exploded, discussing the conflict with Ukrainian and Western officials and experts, and saw that the success of recent operations was no accident. The challenge now is saying, staying the course until the full gains of victory can be reaped for Ukraine and the United States. Okay, when is mission accomplished? What is full victory? Is you is Ukraine, you know, just going to beat Russia out of the country and then leave it like that or is this going to turn into a domestic conflict on Russian turf? Who the fuck knows? War can go on for a really 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 fucking long time and that's sort of the fucking point of it, which is why they keep on having all these forever fucking wars. But we're not allowed to bring any of this up, I guess, right? <laughs> it's just something to consider. Ukraine's success has been driven by four factors. Leadership, morale, competence, and foreign support. It's just the latter, really. Because, like, that... They, 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 so many videos coming out in, in, like, really early stages of this where volunteer militia were just fleeing and being forced back into the conflict where people were just going AWOL. This has been mismanaged from the fucking start by anybody on the ground standards. They knew it. And they were saying, don't go. And there have been many Americans who did go and they were like, hey, what the fuck? We don't have much ammo or weapons or anything. And, and you're not giving us much on the ground support. Are we just meat shields to you? And Ukrainians just sort of get back out there, do your job. <laughs> Con commentators have focused mainly on the last one. I wonder why. And it's true that weapons, intelligence, and economic aid supplied by the U.S. and Europe have been crucial. Without substantial help from its friends, Ukraine could never have achieved what it has. It is equally true, however, that foreign support would have yielded little without Ukrainians' desire and ability to fight. Why are you ignoring the fucking foreign volunteers? Why are you ignoring the foreign support? Why are you only saying it's Ukrainians? Oh, because you gotta make it seem like just a bunch of scrappy patriots, right? It can't be a proxy war. It has to be a bunch of scrappy patriots who just have a willingness and ability to fight and ignore the fact that, you know, their kids are going to Nazi boot camps. Um, so, and I'm not exaggerating either. Like, they're literally running child soldier training camps and you can see Azov logos everywhere and fucking Nazi shit. Because it's Nazi shit. 
Um, what distinguishes this conflict from recent U.S. fiascos from Iraq to Afghanistan is not the outside aid provided, but the local factors that have allowed that aid to be used efficiently. They're going to whitewash Afghanistan right here. Be, be prepared. As the Taliban approached Kabul in August 2021, for example, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani hastily fled the country, contributing to a collapse and rout of government forces. He now lives comfortably in the UAE while his people suffer. Six... <laughs> Six months later, as Russian forces approached Kiev, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky... You can always tell when somebody supports this war when they don't have the two Ys on the end of the name Zelensky. It has two Ys. And people who, uh, who, who are serious about this know how the name is spelled. Was offered the same option. He chose to stay, saying, The fight is here. I need ammunition, not a ride. For what? To shoot people? No. To be the actor you are on the front lines, acting like you give a fuck. That's all. You're an imperialist too. You're a fucking National Guard. Its biggest unit is, is, is fucking imperialist in nature and part of the Azov movement, a global white nationalist movement. But we're not allowed to talk about that, are we? Zelensky's bravery and defiance inspired Ukrainians and the world at large. So, look, ordinary citizens. It's all about emotional fucking passion finally has been matched with performance. The contrast with Russia is striking. <laughs> Putin's been erratic. The morale of Russian forces is low. Their performance has been fumbling. Have you been in Russia? Council of Foreign Relations guy, have you been in Russia? That's what I need to know, because I haven't seen it. You know, I haven't seen it. If you look at this article, and by the way, I have to pull this up on fucking archive, because uh, the site that this is on put this behind a fucking paywall. Um, they're going to ignore, like, the, 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 the entire other side here, and they're also going to whitewash previous things. Iraq was a murder fest for money. Afghanistan was a murder fest for money. Libya was a murder fe fest for money. And it was all to strengthen the petrodollar and keep U.S. hegemony. Um, this is the same thing. It's the same fucking thing. You know? Um, and the, the fact is that the Taliban you mentioned earlier there, that Taliban is the result of U.S. outside help too. So claiming that the U.S. needed to help because it already helped, uh, maybe the U.S. should just stop fucking helping. Maybe. So they're just propagandizing. This is pure propaganda. That's all it is. It's propaganda from the Council on Foreign Fucking Relations by Gideon Rose. Gideon should go on the ground in Russia and see how things actually are. And he should also be honest about Nazis. Because if you'll notice, if you'll notice in this uh, self-aggrandizing shit fest, um, not once does the word Nazi appear. Not once. Right? I wonder why. I wonder why if you try to find the word Nazi in this, you'll fail. Maybe it's because they don't want to talk about a lot of where U.S. money is going and the fact that there's no guarantee it's not going to Azov and the fact that Azov is the single biggest fucking group there. Maybe that's why. Maybe, maybe that's why. You know? Maybe the fact that Azov is at the head of their veterans affairs um, and that when there were a hundred... Uh, prisoners freed not too long ago. There were a lot of Azov people and there was Son and Rads and other Nazi shit. Maybe that's because these people are heavily affiliated with Nazis. Hmm. Man, I'm evil for even broaching that. So let's just finish with something less evil, you know. 
Biden speaking, because, you know, everybody knows that Biden is on the side of Ukraine and he would never say anything that might compromise some narrative that would help Ukraine, like Russia blowing up their own pipeline. Russia blew up their own pipeline. Mind you, I'm saying Russia blew up their own pipeline, you know, um, because it would be some kind of treason for me to, to say otherwise. Russia blew up their own pipeline. And here's proof, you know, uh, people are tweeting Biden delivers again. Well, what did Biden do? Nord Stream was sabotaged. It's now leaking oil into the Baltic. The CIA has been warning of this attack. Biden certainly didn't do it. But, hey, this video was taken on February 7th. Um, Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. But but how will you how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will. uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. But he didn't do it. They didn't do it. He didn't do it. In fact, you know, definitely unsubscribe. And while you're unsubscribing, also feel free to unsubscribe from this if you have already. Um, And if you love those in power, the rich, cops, troops, feds and snitches, the school system, banksters, mega corporations, intelligence agencies, uh, the World Economic Forum, the Council for Foreign on Foreign Relations, the United Nations or the you know, NATO folks over there who just, you know, happen to have a lot of Nazis in their history. You know, if you if, if you love those people, you, if you love gun control, if you love war, the state doing what they tell you, definitely don't sub to my newsletter. You won't like it. Because it's giving people concrete reasons and solutions um, to be anarchist and it's giving people all the footage they, the footing they need in order to concretely believe that it's time to smash the fucking state.